Hey, how's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be reviewing Scaring the Hose by JPEG Mafia, aka Peggy, and Danny Brown. Scaring the Hose was an album released in 2023, uh, also one of the most critically acclaimed albums of that year, getting positive reviews from all over the internet. Scaring the Hose was a collaborative effort between two rappers, uh, Danny Brown and JPEG Mafia. Um, let's start with Danny Brown first. Danny Brown is an underground rapper known for his unconventional style and flow of rapping. He started his career with his first record, Hot Soup, in 2008, and then he would go on to release another album in 2010 by the name of The Hybrid. These two albums didn't gain that much recognition and it was very different from the Danny Brown we know today, mostly because it stuck to more traditional hip-hop standards and were just decent rap albums. His third record, Triple X, released in 2011, was one of the most bold and interesting hip-hop albums that would be released that year, maybe second next to X Military by Death Grips. Not only did it have a unique audio aesthetic, uh, it also had pretty decent storytelling as well. After this, he would release another album by the name of Old in 2013, uh, which was a very similar album, except this time with more packed features and it sounded like more, uh, more of a budget to it. His 2016 record, Atrocity Exhibition, however, uh, is now one that is pretty consistently celebrated as one of his best works. Atrocity Exhibition was an even more daring album than Triple X, um, he uses a more high-pitched flow delivery on this one to express themes of addiction, mental health, and, uh, and fame. Every element on that album really comes together to create this unhinged and just nightmare experience. Danny's releases weren't too significant after that. Uh, that was until the release of last year's album, Scaring the Hose. So that's uh, Danny Brown. Um, let's move on to JPEG Mafia, Peggy. Peggy was a similar rapper in the sense that he was very experimental. He had his own unique style that really went against what you know works in the poppy and radio standards. What sets them apart, however, is that JPEG Mafia, uh, from the start, has stayed pretty consistent with his genre. Releasing albums such as Ben Carson in 2016, uh, Veteran in 2018, All My Heroes Are Cornballs in 2019, EP in 2020, LP and Offline in 2021. He is a much newer of a rapper, but he has released so many albums that were all pretty consistent and great. And also, in many ways, Peggy was pretty much like the modern-day Kanye West. One, he is very versatile, being able to produce, rap, and sing pretty decently. Two, he's also been putting out very consistently good albums so far. And three, he has been posting a lot of out-of-pocket stuff on social media, like political statements, starting beef with other people, uh, with other artists and going on rants. There's even a photo of them together, which I thought was pretty pretty funny. So all in all, what we are getting essentially are two artists who aren't afraid to test the new limits of hip hop, uh, releasing music that is forever changing. Also, it's a collaboration that I have been wanting uh, since 2022. Lastly, I want to mention that the name Scaring the Hose is a pretty fitting title for this album, as it is a phrase used to describe music that goes against the traditional norms and may not appeal to the pop audience. Danny and Peggy knows that what they have made is not going to be liked by everyone, and is certainly not meant to be played on the radio. I was very excited when this album first released, um, as a fan of both rappers at the time. Uh, now almost exactly a year ago, um, here's my in-depth track by track analysis. I'm back, I had to get water, my throat was dry as hell. First track of this album is Lean Beef Patty. Peggy gets the first verse off the bat, and you can tell the kind of person that he is already with his first lines being, first off, fuck Elon Musk, $8 is too much, this past expensive. He is also making reference to his Twitter controversies uh, with the line, if I tweet, then delete, then I meant it. Peggy then gets hyped for the beat drop, saying, this ain't what you want. Kind of like Lil Uzi Vert on I Just Wanna Rock, uh, but unlike Lil Uzi, he is yelling with this added echo effect that makes it sound like his voice is reverberating all around the room. This is a pretty good introduction uh, because then the drums kick in with a heavy amount of bass uh, paired with some synthesizers, which is a part of the song that really goes super hard, uh, but at the same time ended way too quickly. I really wanted more from it, maybe for it to last a little longer. And then the song goes into kind of like an intermission section uh, before Danny starts his verse on the second half of the song. In my opinion, Danny's rap verse was significantly worse than Peggy's. Danny's delivery was very similar to the one he used many times on Atrocity Exhibition, using a very high-pitched voice um, that was very perfect on that album because the theme was all about haunting and that fit very well in that sense. It was kind of like Ozzy Osbourne on Diary of a Madman. 
But Scare in the House is a very different album on the other hand, and I'm just not sure about using that same delivery on a very different beat. But overall, it's it's a, it's quite a song to begin with. Moving on to track two is Step Up Pig. This time, starting with Danny, um, the same things I said about him on the last song kind of still applies here. The production on the song sounds pretty fresh. Uh, again, very bass heavy. Then Peggy takes the stage, uh, delivering another great verse, a uh, much longer one this time. This verse demonstrates his flow rather than his ability to get hype. The song was also much more Peggy dominant. Uh, Danny felt much more like a side feature just because of how long Peggy's verse was in comparison to Danny's. And I will say the beat, although it is a banger, felt really unfocused and just a little messy. There are way too many beat switches. Um, I would much rather for it to just stay at a single one much longer and just let it sink in before moving on to the next so fast. Moving on to track three, it's Scaring the Hose, the title track, which starts with these suspicious wet clapping sounds. This song, as the title states, is a direct reference to the music uh, that don't appeal to the pop audience. Stop scaring the hoes, play that shit, I don't have them touch their toes. We don't want to hear the weird shit no more. What the fuck is that? Give me back my ox cord. Damn, bro, I should leave you rapping, bro. Why am I here on YouTube, bro? I should start a rapping career. No. <laughs> Danny gives another verse on this song, uh, but I actually love this one a lot more because it brings back elements from Atrocity Exhibition, uh, like putting reverb on his rapping, pairing it with a pretty dark sounding beat. The ad libs in the back, of course, was another plus. Danny and Peggy has a lot of chemistry on this song. Um, with Danny having these haunting verses while Peggy hits people with his pretentious chorus. Which, if there's any song where Danny and Peggy needs to have chemistry, it would definitely be this one. Considering that both of them do fit in this category of artists who have music that people consider uh, scaring the hoes. Track 4 is Garbage Pale Kids, which takes these chantings from an old Japanese commercial from the mid 80s and samples them into an eerie and kind of satanic sounding beat. With a beat like this, of course you gotta let Danny shine, and he definitely did not disappoint on this one. With the lines, people don't rap no more, they just sell clothes, so I should probably quit and start a line of bathrobes. And of course, eat your ass like a cannabis. Then what sounds like digital and distorted guitar chords are playing, uh, giving an ominous vibe. This was used as an intermission segment, introducing the next verse by Peggy, uh, which in terms of vocal delivery, might be my favorite Peggy verse on this whole album. It is hype, it's got flavor, and it definitely has flow. And finally, it ends with uh, those grimy guitar chords again. Overall, it's, um, it's a pretty interesting song. Moving on to track 5, which is Fentanyl Tester. I don't know what's up with these names, y'all. Like, how do they keep coming up with this shit? Now, even though the name is Fentanyl Tester, it is actually the most chill track on the album by far. Also, maybe the most easy to listen to, uh, kind of moving away from the scare in the hose aspect and moving towards the traditional pop influences. At the end of the song, it seems like Peggy had way too much fun producing as he just starts cutting and replaying the same phrase over and over again. At one point of the song, it just straight up repeats the word milkshake over and over again. Overall, it's a solid track, not much else to talk about here. Then we move on to track six, Perfect. The song is produced in a way where it just sounds so grand and there are these horns and heavy drums that make it feel like a theater play where it is the final act, Danny and Peggy are about to face off in a final duel. Throughout the song, you can even hear cheering coming from a crowd in the background. Peggy's entrance to this duel is so dramatic, uh, then giving another amazing verse, uh, one of my favorites on this album. Both Danny and Peggy got to shine equally on this song, uh, both giving their greatest verses to date. The song was amazing front to back, just such a, such a banger. Then we move on to track 7, Shut Your Bitch Up slash Muddy Waters. You can tell this is one of those songs where there's like two songs in one. Um, the first song, Shut Your Bitch Up, uh, is rapped by Danny Brown, while Muddy Waters is rapped by JPEG Mafia. The first song has a pretty good production. I didn't think it flowed too well, however. Um, Danny's flow, I don't think it works very well on this beat. Peggy's song, however, um, Muddy Waters, is a very different story. The beat used on this album is so nonchalant and just with these high-pitched voices appearing in the back, it really could have been produced for the album Mad Villainy. Overall, it's a pretty decent song. Track 8 is Orange Juice Jones. Like Fentanyl Tester, uh, it is a much more of a chill song. Danny's rapping was pretty good here. Uh, some of the samples were used pretty good as well. Danny's verse kind of ends really abruptly, um, getting interrupted by a phone notification. 
Right after that, uh, Peggy gives his verse. He raps over the same beat as Danny rapped over. Overall, this is a pretty uneventful song. There's not much to talk about. Track nine is Kingdom Hearts Key, which samples a Japanese song from 1996 named Yakusoku wa Aranai. A song that is originally super bright and enthusiastic is sampled into a beat in a way that makes you question life and if it's a simulation or not. The way he cuts and samples a song is super creative. It really is something Kanye West or even Daft Punk leveled. Danny's verse on the song may be the best one on the album, uh, which floats so much better in comparison to his other ones. The song also contains the only feature outside of Danny and Peggy, uh, that being Red Veil, which is an artist that is relatively new to the music industry. He has a flow that reminds me a lot of Tyler, the creator, uh, and I can't wait to see what he puts out next. Overall, a great song. Track 10 is God Loves You, a track that samples a song You Don't Know, uh, a gospel song released in 1987, uh, which really is a banger within itself. The sampling plus a little distortion on the song as the beat drops, and it makes for a beat that sounds like the power of God is so great that it is overpowering the speakers. It's a pretty cool sound. Um, Danny delivers a pretty good verse as well. It's like he's getting better and better as the album progresses. Although the line, Pussy wet like Noah's Ark, go on ahead and bless me. If you on your period call me Moses, cause I'm about to split that Red Sea. There are also numerous other lines where Danny is referencing the Bible or, or the birth of mankind as a way of describing sex. It's quite the interesting decision. Peggy's verse is also pretty good. Uh, one thing I have to say by this point of the album is that the best thing about Peggy's rapping is that he has stayed consistent. There hasn't even been one mediocre Peggy verse so far. Yeah, this is the song is so catchy and heavy at the same time. It's truly amazing. Track 11 is Run the Jewels. It's a pretty short song, being only one minute long, but both Danny and Peggy uh, raps her asses off on this one. Peggy gives these shouting vocals, which switches things up for him, and as for Danny, it's more of the same old. What I would have loved is this song to be much longer, however. Track 13 is Jack Harlow Combo Meal. It starts with a calm and peaceful piano session. Um, then distortion and drums are added to the piano, creating a pretty cool beat where it is both chill yet still a banger. Danny's vocal delivery is once again great, um, but it just doesn't fit very well with this beat. I feel like I'm still really conflicted on whether I like it or not. Peggy, on the other hand, has the weirdest entrance to his verse yet. He starts by rapping as more like the background vocals, like you can't hear him that well. Then he just starts heartfelt singing with just a heavy load of auto-tune. And then he actually begins rapping, which he gives a pretty good verse. Overall, it's a pretty good song, a song that could only be made by JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown collaboration. Track 13 is Ho. Don't worry, Ho stands for Heaven on Earth. The beat starts sounding really incomplete, uh, but as the bass kicked in, it did a pretty good job of filling in the gaps, but it still sounded kind of choppy. Peggy once again gave another great mic performance, uh, except this one part where he says, Through brothers, they don't know. Not sure if it was just a really bad voice crack or if it was an artistic choice. It, it was a little weird, but uh, moving on to Danny's verse, which is also pretty decent. But the most intriguing part about the song uh, probably is how the song closes. A woman in a choir sings on how the Lord made heaven on earth. And I'm not sure if she means that the Lord loves or are disgusted by Heaven on Earth, aka Hoes. Nonetheless, their voices sound very powerful and controlling. Pairing that with Peggy's signature production style, you get a pretty unique experience. Then we move on to the closer track, track 14, uh, Where You Get Your Coke From, which is a closer that really loud at the beginning with these grungy guitar chords. The song also samples these ugly and noisy sounds. Peggy switches from rapping to yelling on the chorus, and um, the Danny verse is also pretty good. I'm not sure if it fits very well with the production again. There's just so much happening on this song. It's very much Death Grips-esque. But yeah, that's um, that's the track-by-track -track analysis. Overall, this was a crazy album. After listening to it, you really need a few minutes to collect your thoughts and process what you just heard. Not an album you can just vibe to with your friends and Definitely not an album that will be loved by everyone, uh, which definitely lives up to his name. The production is all over the place, clearly influenced by 20th century Japanese entertainment. Vocally, we got Danny's wacky flow, 
with outlandish lyrics and we got JPEG Mafia who is just a hype machine. Although Danny Brown did come to deliver a few uh, pretty good verses on especially the second half of this record, overall I think JPEG Mafia had better rapping as a whole. I also just think this album got better as it progresses. I mean, whether that be Danny flowing better from the beginning to the end, uh, or the production being more inventive, the second half is definitely stronger than the first half in my opinion. A kind of issue I have with this album though is that um, although there are countless brilliant ideas displayed throughout, uh, they all felt like they move too fast or are just really compacted. This album does a lot of switching from this to that and it's just like, like calm down. I think what Peggy needs to do is to use a little more repetition for us to get used to the sound and to process it all. A lot of my favorite songs or parts of songs uh, always felt a little short and I wanted them to last a lot longer. Most of the songs here are around the 2 minute, 2 minute and 20 second range. But I mean at the end of the day it's still an album that's supposed to scare the hoes so I don't really know. For my favorite track on the album, uh, there are a few songs that could be my favorite on this album. It's going to be either Between Perfect or God Loves You. Um, Kingdom Hearts Key was also really great. But I have to go with God Loves You. I mean, it's just like a perfect song in pretty much all aspects. The more I listen to the song, it doesn't just get stale. In fact, it just gets better. A, a huge banger for sure. For my least favorite track, um, there are also multiple ones that could have been it. Should I say a bit up slash Muddy Waters, um, Orange Juice Jones, Step a Pig, and Ho Heaven on Earth. These songs just didn't really stick out to me and I kind of had a hard time revisiting them. But my least favorite track is probably going to be Orange Juice Jones. Um, it's a song that just went the safest route, you know? Didn't really do anything risky or it didn't even do a good job of keeping my attention. Overall, it is an album that is forever pushing the limits of modern rap music. And for that reason, it may not appeal to traditional rap listeners. It is one of the most unique albums you will ever hear. It's almost like a desert oasis in somewhat of a dry year of 2023. I'm feeling an 8.2 on Scaring the Hose by JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. So that's it for this video. Um, hope y'all enjoyed. Leave in the comments what y'all think about this album. Also leave in the comments what you want me to do next. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.